Do it tonight. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, so they told us, you know, you have to have a talent. It's kind of an obvious portion. Um, and I realized, wow, I really don't have any talents. Um, but I did come to the conclusion, I can write, I can read, and I can talk. So by God, I can do stand-up. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I was like, all right, stand-up could work for Mr. T, it's funny, the crowd laughs about anything you say. So I was like, okay, just piece together some jokes, so for six minutes, just chuckle every five seconds or so, and it'll make me feel great. But I've had a lot of fun doing Mr. T, really. Um, although in the beginning, I was a little confused. They asked me uh, if I was excited to raise money for charity, but I got concerned because I thought she had gotten fired from Jiggles. <laughs> She's still there, don't worry. Um, but I guess we're raising money for KMM, so it's going to a good cause. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been a football referee for the past three years now. Tucker Bateman is out there with me. Uh, I do grades three through eight, um, and I came to the conclusion this year, it took me three years to realize it, that high school dances are exactly the same as football. Yeah, you laugh, just wait. <laughs> so, ladies, you may not realize this, but there's a huge scouting process that goes into dances, almost more than football. The only way you can make a high school boy more like a football scout is if you gave him a clipboard. Other than that, he's exactly the same. He's got his first round pick, right? He's got the few alternatives, but he knows who he wants. And I came to realize, like, wait a sec. If we did a draft for homecoming and prom, that would be the best thing ever. <laughs> if you got first pick, though. So I think we should stick every guy in a room, they all get a random little number, and it tells them your first pick, your 72nd pick, and you just go from there, right? So you know who your first pick is, it's that smoking hot varsity starting senior girl, but then that little D3 freshman gets there on the first pick and you're scrambling, calling your agent, like, who can I get now? You, get, you end up with the sophomore, like the freshman, you don't, you've never met her before, but hey, that's why there's trades, and there should be trades. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? Talk to some guy inside, like, hey, um, I'll buy you and your date dinner, but we're gonna trade dates. <laughs> And if that doesn't work out, you could try, you know, mid-season trades. You go to homecoming, you're doing all right, but your date don't dance so well. Maybe she's me. <laughs> the date over there, she dances really well. So you want to do a mid-season trade, work out some numbers, hand over some cash, trade dates. <laughs> but the dance is actually the best part, because girls do this really awesome thing. They turn into offensive linemen. You know what offensive linemen looks like? <laughs> Three-point position. Yeah. <laughs> He looks like a quarterback. He just sits there, right? He doesn't know what to do. If he's a senior, he knows what's up. He's calling plays, looking at his buddies. Blue 42! Oh, if he's a freshman, it is glorious. He looks like the little D3 freshman that's never played a game in his life. He's on the practice squad. He has no idea what's going on. He is so scared. He just sits there. But at least he's playing, right? Because you've got, you've got the players, and you've got the sidelines. And man, I love the sidelines. Because they're just like the football sidelines, right? They're jumping up and down like, yeah, testosterone! Woo! And they're over there like, put me in the game, coach! And they never get to go in, but they're just hopeful. You see that one cute girl over there, and like, ooh, maybe next year. <laughs> but they never go in. They never go in. It's awful. And then beyond them would be the spectators. And they're exactly the same as football spectators. They're doing one of two things. Watching the game or on their phones. Like tweeting, hey, did you see that awesome play by that QB? What a snap. <laughs> but there's one thing that football, that football has that dances don't. And Flo, I think you'll agree with me on this one. Okay. We need referees. <laughs> Can you imagine how great that'd be to have referees and penalties at a dance? Here's three of my favorites. But the key is, don't change any of the penalty calls. Three favorites. Holding. Unnecessary roughness. And my favorite, illegal use of the hands. I know, I know. So Tucker ref with me, my brother also ref. Many of you know my brother. He's 16, he's a year younger than me. Uh, he's a junior, he goes here. Um, he's funny, he's a nice guy, but it's weird. He's 13 months younger than me which means there was either a really good sale of diapers at the time, or my mom and dad got a punch card from the hospital, like a two-for-one special. Buy one now, get one free later. <laughs> he was clearance, baby. He was the free one. 
I mean, I kid, right? I, you know, I give, him, I give him crap, but I gotta be nice to him because he knows a lot of stories about me and they're not good. We shared a room for 11 years, bunk bed. I went through what he calls the brown phase. I learned color coordination in fourth grade. My mom got me these, you know, brown corduroy pants, you know, the ones that sound like Velcro when you run. I got brown shoes to go with them and a brown shirt. I was glorious. <laughs> He calls me 50 shades of brown for it, but I thought I looked nice. The other one was great, because we shared the bunk bed. I was top bunk. Spider-Man came out in 2002, and if calculus has taught me anything, I would have been six years old at the time. So Spider-Man came out, what did I be for Halloween that year? Spider-Man, why not? A few months later, Brian walks into the room, here's me, top of the bunk, climbing down the ladder, head first, in the Spider-Man costume, and he just looks at me and goes, what are you doing? I'm pretty sure after that, I don't remember what happened because I fell and hit the ground. He remembers, I don't. So my brother's great, he's funny, my mom's funny too, but I think one of the funniest people I know is my dad. My dad's always been there, he's coached me in football, he even did lacrosse, he's never played lacrosse in his life, but he did a good job of coaching. You know, he told you how to run, how to jump, and how to run faster. <laughs> and he also coached basketball, so this year he was my rec basketball coach. Uh, there's ten of us on the team, we're all seniors, all guys, and he's the coach, and his main job was there for drafting, which I went with too. You know, I was like, alright dad, here's our picks, this is what we're going to do, we got our team, we love the team. And so my dad then kind of turned into more of a manager than a coach. He would send up group texts like, hey guys, game tonight, 7 p.m. at Hazelbrook, be there. A few days later, all right guys, next game at the high school, 7 p.m. And I remember one time, my teammate writes back, he goes, oh, sorry coach, can't be there, fractured my wrist. My dad writes back, huh, that's funny, I thought high school boys had really strong wrists. <laughs> Spend my time. Have a great rest of your night.